The vitamin D and omega-3 trial, VITAL, is a large-scale randomized clinical trial of vitamin D, 2,000 IUs a day, and the omega-3s, one gram a day, EPA plus DHA, in the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease and cancer. It's a large U.S. trial nationwide with men and women age 50 and older, racial diversity. We have more than 5,000 African Americans. The primary endpoints of the VITAL trial for cardiovascular disease were major cardiovascular events, a composite of myocardial infarction, stroke, and cardiovascular mortality. We had pre-specified secondary endpoints to look at each of those components, MI, stroke, CVD mortality, as well as an expanded composite that included coronary revascularization. We also had a co-primary of total invasive cancer and secondary cancer endpoints, including site-specific cancers and cancer mortality. So VITAL included nearly 26,000 U.S. men and women age 50 and older. It covered all 50 U.S. states and it had racial ethnic diversity with more than 5,000 African Americans. So at the AHA meeting, I presented the main findings from the VITAL trial. For omega-3s, which were more relevant to the cardiovascular endpoints, we found only a small and statistically non-significant reduction in the primary endpoint of major cardiovascular events, an 8% reduction. For the pre-specified myocardial infarction endpoint, we found a significant 28% reduction, but no reduction in stroke or cardiovascular mortality or in the expanded uh, cardiovascular endpoint that included coronary revascularization procedures. We saw no reduction with the omega-3s in total invasive cancer or cancer mortality. So with vitamin D, 2,000 IUs a day compared to placebo, we saw no significant reduction in any of the cardiovascular events either the primary or the secondary endpoints. However, for cancer, we, even though we saw no reduction in total invasive cancers, we saw a signal for a reduction in cancer death. Now, this has been suggested by some previous randomized trials of vitamin D that it, vitamin D may make tumors less invasive and less likely to metastasize. And we did see, especially when we accounted for the latency period of cancer, excluding the first two years, we saw a 25% significant reduction in cancer death. However, we consider this hypothesis generating and not really a conclusive finding in terms of cancer death with uh, vitamin D. More research is needed. So in the omega-3 analyses, we looked at the nutrient status of the participants. We were interested in whether those who had higher fish consumption versus lower fish consumption in the diet would have a different response to omega-3 because fish is the primary source of omega-3s in the diet. And just dividing it at the average intake of fish, one and a half servings per week, we found that those who were below the median intake did have a statistically significant reduction in the primary endpoint of major cardiovascular events. They had a 19% reduction, but those who had fish intake above the average did not have a reduction in cardiovascular events. With heart attack, the, the MI findings, those who had lower fish intake had a 40% lower risk of heart attack, and those who had higher intake had no reduction. And so there was significant interaction by dietary fish intake. So we think in terms of the take home messages for both of the interventions, the omega-3s and the vitamin D, that those who are already taking um, these supplements, and there are many people in the United States and throughout the world who are taking these supplements, we didn't find clear evidence that they need to stop. Um, we demonstrated safety of these doses of the 2,000 IUs a day. There was no hypercalcemia. 
with the one gram a day of omega-3s, we did not see bleeding, increase in bleeding risk, uh, and we didn't see clear evidence that they need to stop. However, we think that clinicians um, should caution patients against megadosing on either vitamin D or omega-3s because there can be risks with the much higher doses. Now, in terms of our findings for fish consumption, that those who had lower intake benefited, still think we should be recommending to patients that they try to get omega-3s from the diet, having at least two servings of fish per week. But many people do not eat fish, and I do think it's reasonable for clinicians to consider on a case-by-case -case basis, individualized decision-making, especially if they're risk factors for cardiovascular disease, whether someone who has very low dietary fish intake might be a candidate and uh, for having an omega-3 supplement. We also hope that over the next uh, two years or so, as more research comes out, not only from vital ancillary studies, like diabetes outcomes, cognitive function, depression, autoimmune diseases, there will be a better understanding of the balance of benefits and risks of these supplements and other randomized trials will be reporting results that the clinical guidelines committee may want, committees may want to look at findings and decide if there should be any changes at all in clinical guidelines.